Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland is one of the most prestigious universities in the world. Inside its labs, the best and brightest try to shed light on the world around us. This is a light sheet microscope. And it's Neuroscience professor Dr. Dwight Burgles uh, is one of them. I came into this field at a very early stage when there weren't many neuroscientists, so to speak. Back then, to study neurobiology, Burgles and other scientists had to turn to life underwater. Squid have one of the largest nerve cells in the, the animal kingdom, and that made it something large enough that you could record from and monitor the activity of. Now he's turning to mice and a mighty tool to delve into the wonder that is the brain. Burgles and his team are focusing on the intricate and complex communication network inside the brains of mice. Their findings could help them better understand the nerve circuits within the human brain as well. That's no easy task. Because there are many different specialized cell types, just like there are in an orchestra, we need to have a very specialized tool that allow us to pick up the violins and the cello and things like that. Just like in an orchestra, the cells in a normal healthy brain work in harmony. About half are nerve cells that generate electrical signals to rapidly relay messages to each other. The other half are glial cells, considered the glue of the nervous system. They have a different job, to insulate and protect the nerve cells and help facilitate signal transmission. Much about them is a mystery. Yeah, that's a cool cell. That's a really cool cell. <laughs> Graduate researcher Tiger Shi is on so, Burgle's yeah. team. They're relying on machine learning, training an AI program to help bring this vast constellation of mice brain cells literally to light. Each individual bright spot is a cell. And then you can see here, so this is all white matter. So this is where it's most dense. You can literally see it connecting the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, so this insulation is incredibly important for regulating the timing of signaling. Processing these massive data sets, easily filling up several hard drives, is another important job delegated to the AI technology. Each brain having over 10 million cells, it would take you years of analysis potentially to actually count all these. And then, you know, we're scaling this up to over 50, 60, 70, 80 brains. Properly analyzing the data is pivotal to help shed light about disorders in human brains like multiple sclerosis, a disease in which the immune system attacks the very protective cells that Burgles and his team are studying. It's scattered all through the tissue. But like any technology, the AI program isn't foolproof. One shouldn't blindly go forward without having a means to validate and make sure that what it's revealing to you is actually real. That means AI will still need to be coupled with other classic tools like advanced microscopes. But no doubt AI has and will be a key player in Burgle's lab, opening up boundless opportunities for discovery. It is so staggeringly powerful in what it can do. It's very clear that science, in order to advance, has to make use of these approaches. Francis Coe, CGTN, Baltimore, Maryland.